Today I'm going to be sharing exactly how I got a 9 in GCSE math. Okay, so the first thing you need to realize is that math is pretty much the only subject out there that is based purely on how much you practice. It's not like science, for example, where there's a knowledge element to it and then you need to also memorize. Math is literally just pure practice. And that's the reason why I always recommend that people ditch the notes and the flashcards for math and just stick to doing as many questions as possible. When I see people studying for math, I often see a whole notebook of just notes and then on top of that flashcards and I'm just thinking to myself how much time they wasted and how that time could have been usefully spent doing practice instead and they would have gotten much higher grades than they are because they're wasting a lot of time on stuff that's not going to help them that much. And honestly, you should take it from me because I got a 9 in GCC math. And on top of that, I just finished AS math and I got a pretty comfortable A without doing any notes, any flashcards, except for a couple specific topics and stats which required memorization. So the technique I'd recommend uh, when it comes to studying for a math exam is going through the textbook and going through each topic that you need to study. And for each topic, picking out the more difficult questions because they tend to reflect the difficulty of the questions on the actual exam. If you can easily do the questions, then check them off the list. But if you can't, then you have two options. The first option is to go bother your teachers and ask them to help you, you know, guide you through the questions. If you ask them, they'll probably help you, but I tend to not be asked to go ask my teachers. So instead, I do the second option. And the second option is the option I always go for, which is just go on YouTube and search up the topic name and then GCSE next one. So for example, completing the square, you would search up completing the square, then GCSE, hit search, and you literally find endless videos and just keep watching videos until you understand the topic. There were actually a lot of times where I had to do this. For example, functions was a topic that really pissed me off. So I had to watch at least three or four different videos until I eventually understood it. So now after you've completed the questions from the textbook, it's now time to go through any other practice questions that you could find online or maybe even past papers and iron out any creases in your knowledge. Now listen, this is very important, right? Focus on the topics that you're not comfortable with. I'll sometimes find myself doing a topic that I find easy because it will give me a sort of an ego boost. I'll be confident because I got it right. But then eventually what that does is it leaves huge gaps in my knowledge because I'm sort of too scared to tackle a topic because I don't want to get it wrong. And so it's crucial that you focus on the topics that you don't like. That's, you don't like them for a reason, it's because you can't get them right. And so you've just identified a gap in your knowledge that you need to solve before the exam comes. And remember, practice, practice, practice. The people that get nines in math are the people that are always practicing. You know, putting aside all the child prodigies and the geniuses, the people that get nines and A stars are the people that put in the most work practicing. They don't put the work in, you know, highlighting their notes and making them look all pretty, right? They practice. So ideally, before an exam, you'd want to reach a point where you're pretty much very comfortable with every single topic. This is because in the exam, there's going to be a lot of questions where it's just incorporating a lot of different topics. And so if you have a gap in your knowledge when it comes to a certain topic, there is the potential that you lose all the marks for a question just because you didn't know one topic when that question includes like four different topics. And finally, this is a bonus secret tip. If you still can't wrap your head around a topic, then one technique that honestly works so well is just go to a parent or go to a friend and try to explain the topic to them even though you don't really understand it. Just go through the steps of explaining the topic and then you find that your brain just rationalizes it, uh, rationalizes the topic on its own. It's, it's quite weird, but it works really well.